Next.js server actions are stable, but I still have one big issue. And no, it's not a concern about mixing front end and back end code in one place. I'm actually okay with that. I actually like it. Don't at me. It's the fact that this code doesn't work and it took me hours to figure out why. So let me show you how to fix it. And then at the end of this, I'll show you a few extra gotchas that I learned while using server actions in my latest project. Before I can show you my specific problem with server actions, let's start with a brief overview of what server actions are. Server actions are a way to handle form submissions in Next.js without having to create separate API endpoints like you used to have to do in the past. This basically means that you can combine your server side logic with your React components, and a lot of people have a big issue with that. This image actually went viral recently showing an inline form submission handler that exclusively runs on the server directly inside of the markup for a React component. So let's address that directly really quickly. To create a server action, you can define it right inside of your React component, but you don't have to. So if you're using server components, you can add the function directly in line or at the top of the function component. If you are using a separate file, you can import this into a client component or, or a server component. So this gives you flexibility to break this out into its own directory of actions and then import them and use them where you need them. Now this would be my recommended way to go because it gives you a little bit of separation between the backend code and the front end, which is something that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. So if we look down here in the documentation for a little bit more of the basics, you basically define a function inside of your component or elsewhere, and then you annotate it with this use server directive. Now this is kind of inconvenient and a little gross looking, but at least it explicitly tells us where this code is going to run. Now, if you wanted to use these with a client component, you can define your action inside of an actions file that has the use server annotation and then import that into a component that uses the use client annotation. Again, a little gross, but also very explicit on where the different pieces of code are going to run. Now you can even pass in a server component as a property to a client component and be able to reference it that way. So there are a few different options to set this up. So let's now start with my specific use case. I've been working on a platform called deals for devs at dealsfordevs.com. Quick shout out to both Century and Zeta for sponsoring my time to work on this project. It's a little late now, but it was basically me trying to aggregate a list of deals for developer related things for video platforms, tools, et cetera. And I had a lot of fun building this and experimenting with Next.js. Now I wanted to allow people to submit deals. So I have a form that they can fill out, which will submit a deal that's not approved yet. Behind the scenes, this will save this to a table in a Zeta database, which is where all the data for this application is saved. Then I have an admin dashboard where I can go in and approve that thing so that it actually shows up on the site. In this case, I'll reject this because that's not a real piece of data. Now, one thing that I started to realize is that I was getting duplicate submissions like this. Now, usually this is a red flag that something is wrong with my code. This means that someone is clicking the submit button, not getting feedback on that submit actually being clicked, and then clicking that thing again before the actual submission has finished taking place. This is obviously a very poor user experience. It also means more admin work for me to go and find the duplicates and remove them. Now, what's interesting is that was just my thought of what was happening, but I was actually able to confirm this inside of the Sentry dashboard. Now I integrated Sentry into my project to be able to track errors, have alerting, et cetera. And when I went into the replay section, I saw that they have a dead clicks section on here. And dead clicks are defined by a user clicking a button and nothing happening for seven seconds. So basically what would happen is users could click my button and I was showing no feedback that it was actually trying to submit. And most importantly, I didn't disable the submit button. So this was considered a dead click. And I was able to find this out inside of the Sentry dashboard and see that this has happened 26 times. It even gives me the Tailwind classes that are on this element, which means I could go back and directly associate this with a button that is inside of my form to be able to submit these deals. So I went back to the documentation for Next.js server actions to try to find a solution to this. Now on the forms and mutations documentation, there is a displaying loading state section that shows exactly how to do this. It seems very simple. Basically, you convert your form to a client component. You then use the use form status hook and grab the pending property. And then you can use the pending property to be able to disable the button, update the text on the button, etc. So that's exactly what I did. So I started out with a regular server component that looks like this, has a bunch of form stuff in here. At the end, I have a button for my submit. So then I updated my code to add that pending hook and then reference that inside of my button. So notice that I turned this into a client component. I then used the hook just like the documentation said. I grabbed the pending property. I did some debugging to see when that thing was changing because it wasn't doing what I thought. And then if we scroll down, I update the text on the submit button to show the dot, dot, dot while it's pending and then disable this thing while it's pending as well. 
Now, I'll be honest, I did the wrong thing and I just pushed this code to production without actually testing it because I assumed it would just work as is. It seems pretty simple, right? Well, I realized that that actually wasn't happening correctly at all. So if we go back to the locally running site and just try to add in some dummy data here to test the submit, we can see that there's no loading state down here. Now, if that was too quick, we could also go in and debug this a little bit further to throttle the network and make it on a slow connection, which should give it more time to be able to show this. So under the networking tab, we can enable presets for fast G, slow G. So I did that and then I went through the same process again. Add in dummy data and submit, but the same thing is happening. No feedback, no idea that this thing is actually submitting the way I wanted it to. So this is where I spent hours now trying to debug why was this not handling this pending state the way it was supposed to. Again, the code is simple enough. We convert this to a client component. We use the hook, we grab the property, and then we use it to update the text and then disable the button. Eventually it took going back to the documentation and reading in detail every single word in here. And I got to a line that says that this hook can only be used as a child of a form element using a server action. Now in my head, I was kind of associating this with the child of a form, meaning the button triggering the form submission. So the button would be a child of the form, not a child component, but inside of the same component, just be able to reference a button inside of the form and then use the hook. However, that's not the case. I don't have any idea why it has to be this way, but that logic has to be broken out into its own component. That is a client component. Now inside of your form, you can then reference the submit button and keep the form as a server component, but import that submit button and it can handle all that logic itself. So this is what I ended up doing. I ended up getting rid of the use client annotation inside of this form, which keeps it as a server component. I then remove the use effect and remove the use form status hook. So I'm not referencing any of that stuff inside of my form. Then I import my submit button that has all that logic. So I basically just copied over all the use client, the imports, the pending state, and then my button as well, including the logic to handle the pending state inside of here. Now this is the only thing I had to change, but now when I go back and try to submit this form, you can see that I actually have the loading state and it handles the submission exactly like it's supposed to while also giving the user feedback that something is happening and disabling that button so I'm no longer gonna get any duplicate entries into my dashboard. But the fact that we have to move that logic into its own client component still seems a little weird to me and I don't really understand the requirement. I'm sure there's a good reason for this and I understand that some things just have to happen, but it just seems weird. So all in all, I was able to figure it out, but I think this is part of the adjustment period that it's gonna to take to be able to adopt something that's brand new like server actions in Next.js. So if you're looking to get started, here are a couple of the other things that I learned that might help you along the way. The first thing that I would recommend is to go ahead and create a separate actions directory to host all of your actions. Now this gives you a clean separation of this code which runs on the server with your server components or client components. Additionally, one thing to know is that you can't import things into a client component from a file annotated with use server. For example, originally I was exporting this category enum from this actions file. The problem is if I wanted to go and reference that inside of a co client component, I would get an error. So if I try to get an import for category and from that actions file, I'm actually gonna get an error inside of Next.js that's really vague and not very helpful, but it's basically coming down to you can't import things like that from a server file into a client component. So if you need to be able to access something like this from the client, go ahead and create a separate types directory and file to be able to save this in so you can import this in your server side code and your client side code and not have any issues. Now, the other thing I think is really neat is the ability to define your schema with Zod and be able to validate your data on the server and then respond back with some sort of answer. The thing that's important though is that you try to parse the data coming from the form into that schema and then catch those errors. From there, you'll wanna be more specific to return some sort of data back to the front end that shows the error and gives feedback to the users on what's wrong. I definitely have a lot of work to go from here, but this is just something I put together in a couple days. Now, the other thing I ended up doing is after being able to successfully save the data to the database, I just redirected the user to a new page. Now, this was easy enough for me to just create this sample page and then redirect the user over. Since I have the add deal button inside of the nav bar, they have an easy way to get back to this form as well. So this just seems like a pretty clean flow of being able to submit the form when it's successful, navigate somewhere else, and they can come back to add another one if they need to. So that was my big frustration with Next.js server actions. All in all, for the most part, I've really enjoyed it. So hopefully I continue to work with it, continue to enjoy it, and hopefully you do as well. Now, because of all this building I'm doing, I'm actually gonna build a course around all the things that I've learned to build something similar to what you saw in this video. Talk about Next.js 14, server components, 
server actions, all the things that you can imagine, including integrating with a database and Zeta authentication with Clerk, and then getting into some of the error tracking and replaying that you saw with Sentry earlier. So if you're interested in that, make sure to check out my newsletter at jamesqquick.com newsletter. Thanks as always for checking out the video and I'll catch you next time.